Welcome back. This is part two of our automation or scripting our lab. In this session, we want to look more carefully at some of the repository commands. Remember the goal. At the end of the, the day, we are going to be able to find all the files that you submitted, and those would be in the submission repository. Get those files out and zip them into a zip file. The zip file, of course, can be moved to your PC where you can unzip them. So at the end of the class, you ought to be able to walk away with all the programs that you did. So let's look again at some of the repository commands. Now, we know about C help. It tells you all the stuff you need to know about all the repositories. Okay. And we're going to focus on the, the uh, CS repository. Need a little more space. Okay. Wait, bear with me. All right, the first thing we want to notice is what happens in the repository. So let's go back and we're going to make ourselves another directory. We're going to call this CS. Okay, and we're going to go into CS and we're going to do our work here. If I wanted to see all the files I have submitted, I can say all the files in the repository, I can say CS status. And step back and for me, there are 285 files. What good is that for you? Not a lot of good. Just like doing LS if you have lots of files, it gives you too much stuff. So you'd like to be able to say, give me files that meet some property, such as CPP files. And now that drops down from um, 285 down to 44, which is a little more manageable. But let's look at this. Notice that some of the files include the source code like this and the corresponding grading report. Because our project is to pull out the source file, then we want to pick out only the source files. All right. Notice, first of all, that all the files that you have in here are named in a funny way. When you submitted your file cryptography, the file in your directory was named cryptography.cpp. When it goes into the repository, your Login is attached just to separate you from other students. So let's try something. Uh, let's try some of these commands. <clears throat> if I try the copy command, let's see what happens. CS copy. Let's just type the command by itself. And it says, whoa, when you say copy, you got to give a file name. And the file name cannot have the user login. So let's just say taxes. I want to copy taxes. So I have to say CP copy taxes. Let's see what happens when that occurs. Oh, the name of the file is taxes.cpp. Sorry about that. Now, I hope you guys have been paying attention. When you see this little arrow, it means something is coming out of a repository into your directory. When you submit, you will see this arrow go in the opposite direction. So something came into our directory. Let's see what it is, ls. And, huh, what came into our directory is a file that is named exactly as it was named in the repository. A file named this way is of little use to you because when we go to compile it, for example, it's going to expect CPP to be the last thing in the file name. So copying by itself copies with what I call the repository name. The fact that your login appears on the end uh, means that this is the name that's used in the repository. What file do you really want? I really would like to have the taxes.cpp file only. And how do we get that? Well, there's a command called csget. And what does it say? 
it says give the file name. That's all. Ignore this part here. Uh, it may work, but it's not of a lot of value. So we can say CS get instead of CS copy. We're going to say CS get taxes, and we see the same action coming out. Something is coming out, but what came out? Notice that now we've got taxes.cpp. Uh, I need to point out something to you. The, for the most part, you can ignore this star because the star doesn't mean anything. The name of the file does not include the star. It's just a special marker saying that this file has special properties. All right. Now, let's see what else we have in here. Let's try something. Let's try CS status. CS status. And let's try this wildcard stuff. Is it clear that repository commands are not the same as your Unix commands? So if I try this here, it's going to say, what did it say? I'm not sure what it said. E. Not sure what it says. Uh, doesn't matter. The, the, the thing you can never do in a repository command is to put a star. Don't ever do that. All right? Um, and I won't even try to explain, all right? Okay, now there's one special command that I created. I created this thing overnight just to help y'all. So there's two things I want you to do. Uh, I want you to install it. To install it, you got to type Type this command. And sorry about that. And the purpose of this command is to retrieve all submitted files of a given type. All right? So once we have this command in hand, it'll do all of that. So let's just try it. We're going to say CS get all. And what kind of files do we want? Let's say for the time being, we want our test cases file. And those look like TSC. TSC. Okay, let's see what happens. It looks like I got one, two of these TSC files. All right. If I wanted my, notice that what you type in as the operand to this command can be any way that a file name ends. That means anything that comes before the dash um, login is what you can enter. So it can be grading report, for example. You have all those grading reports. So I can say CS get all report. Okay. And let's see what comes out. And you see all these files coming in. All these files. So I can say, show me all my reports. And you see grading reports for all the programs. Get it? So when it's time for us to archive all of your source files, your .cpp files, what command are we going to type? Yeah, we're going to type CS get all space cpp. The next video, we're going to start walking through the project of actually doing the archival.